Hi, I'm James. I'm going to show you my Free Spirit recreation gear. Come have a look. First thing I'll show you is the trailer. Uh, this is the premium model as sold by Caput. Uh, I bought it from Caput in Langley. Uh, so the premium model of the FSR trailer basically has the, the armoring uh, sidestep type stuff, the front basket and the uh, tower here and the, the racks underneath the tower too. Um, the first trailer that I got from Caput to the, sold by Free Spirit Recreation leaked like crazy, had quite an issue. Uh, I bought it back in March. Um, Free Spirit Recreation was kind of dragging their heels. Uh, Caput came through, said, come on down, we've got a premium there. Um, I'd only had the base model, so it didn't have all this stuff on it. Uh, they said, come on down, we're just going to give you a premium, get you on your way. Sorry for what happened. That was fantastic. Uh, I was able to do a lot more with this uh, configuration than my original plans for the uh, the base model trailer. Uh, first thing I can show you <coughs> is my hot water on demand shower. I got a water system on board. I'll show you that in a bit. Basically I got a valve here. I can run water right into here. Hook up the propane to one of my tanks here. And you've got uh, on-demand shower. I got a little shower tent. I didn't have it set up on this trip. Um, it was a little bit of a tough trail. I didn't want to pack all the water with me this time. But anyway, that's how that that's how that looks. Might be wondering about this box here. This is my uh, electrical distribution box. It's also my distribution uh, for the trailer wiring. Um, I upgraded it with the uh, the seven pin wiring uh, so that I could have a little more options electrically going into the back like charging my battery system um, and uh, reverse lights and stuff like that. So in here this box I just bought off Amazon um, fits in there perfectly uh, and inside I've got a lithium battery set up and I'll give you a closer look so I packed a lot of stuff into this box here um, basically I got my uh, my seven four pin to seven pin kind of conversion boxes here. Uh, I just I cut the the four pin um, cable, ran it into the box from the kind of the back. Uh, comes into here distribution box that came with the uh, the seven pin setup. So the cable just comes in into this box and then it's split from there. Um, I added into one of my trailer lights that I put on. Uh, reverse light capability so that's nice um, I got a battery isolator switch here this is the charging system for the lithium battery um, and I usually if it's sitting at home for a while I'll just throw the lithium on its charger before I head out uh, little power station here can charge all my phones or whatever I want to charge with that um, and I've got a, a switching system here. So I've got water pump, uh, interior lighting. Um, I got a 12 volt uh, kind of cigarette lighter style power uh, plug at the back of the trailer inside so that I can run my air pump, pump up floaties, my air mattress that's in the tent that I'll show you and whatever else I want to power through that uh, exterior lighting I've got um, 
kind of an ambient uh, rope lighting inside the uh, the side panels of the the tower system. I've got uh, the two bright LED lights on either side, and then I've got the reverse light on its own separate circuit because I did uh, have to play around with the wiring there and just make sure I wasn't feeding from two places at the same time. But won't go too much into that. But yeah, it all kind of fits in here. I can still pull the battery out. Um, worked really well. Okay, so here's kind of the, the working parts of my water system. Uh, I've got uh, two water tanks on board, I'll show you in a minute. Um, they're, they're teed into one another and this uh, into this line which comes in into my screen. I know the screen usually should be uh, pointing the other way, pointing down, but it darned if it didn't tighten right up right there and I didn't want to try to force it in any farther so that's good enough for me as long as it does its job uh, water pump sure flow uh, all this stuff most of the parts and pieces I just ordered off Amazon uh, and then the, the hosing and stuff I got at my local hardware store uh, I did mostly packs for for all the water lines um so uh, water pump into an accumulator after the accumulator you'll see it splits there uh that splits and then goes to my my shower supply right there uh so after that split it goes up i got a high point vent in there just to when i drain the system sediment filter and then uh, a little filter in the corner there before it goes to my drinking water it's just a chlorine and a finer finer filter comes out runs over um, I don't know if you can see it very well runs over and then goes up and goes out to the other side I'll show you the top out there The main operating area of the uh, camp trailer. Fresh, clean drinking water from here. You can also use it to cook with. Uh, cool River roto molded cooler here. We got just some a bit of spices and some cooking spray here. Uh, this little thing. Bought that on Amazon. Uh, Found the cooler on Amazon. I'm not affiliated with Amazon, but uh, anywho. Uh, this is a, a two burner stove by Cook Partner, or by Partner Steel, sorry, it's called the, the Cook Partner. Um, this, uh, these brackets, they're just, um, I found them on Amazon. They are stainless, uh, collapsible shelf brackets work fantastic for what I needed so I can just fold the stove down and open her up and set it up and use it uh, for propane I got the other tank on the front I can run my propane uh, hose too and use the stove fantastic stove love this stove Awning is a tool awning I got from Carpet. Uh, I bought the awning and the Free Spirit Odyssey 55 from uh, from Carpet, and uh, mostly I wanted to go to them 
to uh, repay them for being so good with the issue that I had with the original trailer. Uh, but this is kind of the you know the setup. I got the awning, my little kitchen area, throw down my mat, and we're good to go. Just wanted to quickly show you uh, when I I built the slide out. Uh, basically, the trick was this is three inch aluminum tubing for the bottom supports. I cut out the uh, rubber matting that comes with the trailer. I cut a piece the same size as this support. Um, I mean, it's about three eight something like that. Uh, glued it to the bottom of of my uh, aluminum three inch square tubing and and I got my angle to hold the uh, the slide outs and just kind of finagled it all in and made it fit. I wanted as much clearance as I could on my slide out when it came out the other side so that I could fit the maximum amount of uh, height for my cooler and it all worked out. I've got less than, I got maybe a quarter inch on that cooler uh, fit there. So when I got the tent, I came, I, I was left with the thought, what do I do with the, the uh, ladder? So I ended up, it almost fit in here, but I had to drill some, drill out some round holes in the other side of the tube here. Ladder fits right in there, close the slide out, you're all good. So the ladder on the uh, the Odyssey just got it hooked up here. Um, I won't go too much into the tear up and tear down of this. Uh, there's a few videos online you can go look at. One thing uh, they tell you in the ads, it's, it's a very comfortable sleeping surface. Um, it's not. So I was looking around for a good fit for an air mattress that would fit in there well. <coughs> and uh, I came up for, this is a truck bed air mattress I found on Amazon. It's just the right size, uh, fits in the 55 perfectly. Um, I got the inflation points towards this side, so I just opened that back screen and uh, uh, cover, and I, I run my, my filler up from my back power point to pump up the air mattress, and uh, it makes it pretty darn comfortable. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, there's a couple things I don't like though, and I'll show you that here. Complaints and grievances. Exhibit A. The system used to hold the rolled up uh, flap. Uh, it's a loop and Velcro. Uh, you know, the, the tried and trusted method we've all seen in tents all our lives is a plastic bar that you put through the loop. Uh, Velcro deteriorates um, after a few years. That's probably going to end up being an issue. And I just might end up sewing a, a plastic bar on there one day. I don't know why, why we would go away from a tried and trusted method and, and, do, and use Velcro. The other place they use Velcro is in this this vent in the back. Um, the idea is you can open it up, get a little bit of uh, airflow behind from behind the um, the cover or the, the top of the clamshell. Um, it the flap opens from the top down, and it's held by three Velcro points. Um, Velcro wouldn't have been that bad here if if they'd hung the flap 
the other way and then maybe giving us some loops up here to pull it up. I don't know why you would use Velcro there because that's it's holding that up and it's going to deter deteriorate and fall down. Um, the the little storage things are pretty nice. They're a little high. They're a little awkward to get into. Um, I don't tend to use them much because it, reaching up there is kind of a pain from a lay down position. I can just barely reach it. And there's more in the corner. Um, it does have that light strip. It's pretty nice. I got a little battery pack up there right now to run that. And uh, there's more of that view there. Let's open it up. Okay, so what do I got going on in here? Well, you can see uh, what I showed you earlier. My my water system's all all affixed to the front there. Um, my water tanks are these are uh, 50 liter tanks um, that I found online, uh, and I'm sorry I cannot remember the company that I bought them from, but they're a wedge style tank. Um, I believe I googled uh, overland water storage and I found the site. Uh, if you're the owner of the site and you're watching this, I apologize. I can't remember, but I do love your tanks. They're, they work fantastic. Um, so what I did here, I had to kind of play around with how I was going to set these up. Um, I, they're they're tied in together like I mentioned um, this tank the where it comes out looks like this right um, gonna, gonna valve. I had to replace the valve that was on this one tank because it was faulty uh, it was a ball valve type thing and I don't think it's any fault to the uh, the people who, who sold these to me. Uh, it was just kind of a manu manufacturer's defect in the valve, so I won't hold that against them, but I did replace it. So I've got pecs coming out of these. These are removable if and when I would want to take them out, but uh, I would have to cut my pec somewhere to get it out. And that's, that's not a big issue. Pex is pretty easy. Fantastic stuff to work with. So what I have here is I got a uh, hose point coming in, 90s down, and what would happen is it fills this tank first. Both tanks are vented. I'll show you that in a sec. Um, fills this tank first, comes out here all the way along the back, goes in behind that tank, it tees up by the corner into the, the feed from that tank, and you can just see that tank runs right through my my bracket for my slide out and there's another valve there as well um, I put in these these little baskets that I also found on Amazon just for a little bit of extra storage up there um, uh, so my fill point on these is just right there I can uh, hook a hose right into that and fill it up. I don't crank the hose because I'm a little leery about putting too much pressure into those tanks, but it does work pretty good. Um, so each tank is vented. You can see that that one's got a vent on it. Basically it runs over up, up to the top here in the corner. Not sure if you can see. It's I got a T and it's tied into the vent on the other side and uh, and then the vent vents come down and I was trying to work out a good way to where would I vent them so 
I found these on Amazon. They're basically a, a vent kit for fuel cans and uh, it's threaded on one side and, and flat like that on the other. So I just took out one of the one of the button bolts there and and put that in its place. So when I fill, eventually uh, both of them will be pouring water out of them and I know that my tanks are full. Works pretty good. Um, the reason that I tied in both tanks uh, together with the vents is the first uh, setup I had of this, um, I didn't have them tied together and I, and I found out that once this tank filled and then it filled this tank and started coming out that, that vent, it didn't want to stop. It's, it, would, it created a siphon that was pulling water through this tank out of that tank and it just went on forever and ever. I'm not sure exactly how far they went down but I I stopped <laughs> I stopped the vent at that point and, and rethought the situation. So something to keep in mind if you're doing all this. Um, uh, another thing I should note is I got this three quarter inch rubber so uh, some people have them in their truck beds and whatnot. I had to work out a method so that these tanks could clear the bolts in the bottom of the trailer and the bolts are there they hold the Timken axles in place and I couldn't just sit the plastic uh, water tanks on the bolts or they would wear through it's just it was a little bit of a, a, a problem I had to deal with so I got this rubber and it was probably only about four inches uh, wide but it it helps me clear those bolts and probably if, if you're ever doing something like this yourself you'll you'll see what I mean when you come to that point but it leaves a gap on the back side of like towards the outer wall of this about yay much that helps me clear the bolts on the back side of this I also have stick on neoprene so just so that it it wasn't rubbing and and wearing and tearing on there I put in these uh, hold down points and just used bungee um, I've got this here because I can hold down my tote in here if I want um, although the tote does fit pretty good I I went I came up here I didn't even tie it strap it down because it's such a tight fit so I have this from here to there you know side to side is my basic cargo room and I found this uh, well found I, I went and bought this Rubbermaid tote it's uh, can't tell you the exact dimensions I think it's a 48 liter fits in there perfectly just enough room to close the door um, and it was a, kind of a lot of looking around I didn't really want to go rubber made I wanted probably something a little better but um, for this whole project as I've gone it's it's everything's been measurement based and try to fit as much uh, as I could in there um, that was possible with the room I had Okay, so here's my my tote and I just bring everything I need in this tote so you pull the tote out and you access everything I got a little cable uh, bug spray I got all my flashlights I got games I got fire starter stuff I got my extra little uh, propane burner if I want to just uh, do my coffee on that I can wipes, soap, shampoo, everything just goes in there. So it's just rather than a whole bunch of totes, which is how I used to do it when I just went out in my explorer, it's all just in one tote. I just show you, uh, it's 
some of my lighting here. So I've got that. That's a light that you'd put on when you want to just get a lot of light on the scene. Um, found them on Amazon. Pretty cheap. Uh, decent lights. They look uh, like that. I'm trying not to blind the camera here. So I got one in the back too. Um, it also act. This light also activates uh, with my reverse light. It's great. Always good to have a lot of lights. The, the the rope lights, the ribbon lights, or whatever I got, I got in here in the, in the FSR kind of branded uh, tool rack, if you will. I've been looking into stuff I can maybe mount on that, but I don't know where to buy that stuff yet. So if anyone knows, um, I wouldn't mind putting a shovel rat shovel holders on there or something i just haven't seen anything that i really like so i got a another light there and when you click all those lights on at night um it uh, really lights the place up I like it and of course inside up front is that light and then up here is my other one hopefully you can see it and that's the lighting so Side note, um, so when you get the premium through Capit, you get also these uh, roof racks. And they're quite long, they stick out quite a bit more, and that's in case you want to put a kayak on or anything like that. Um, I'm not really a, a kayaker, so I just, I trim them down to fit within, within this footprint here. Um, and I, I always knew I was going to get a roof basket to sit in there for a little extra storage. Um, so it's it's interesting if you go to Capit and you want to buy the basic trailer. Uh, this, of course, we're looking at the premium here. Uh, and the basic was the one that I first purchased that I had issues with. Um, it doesn't come with these roof racks. Uh, and it's 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 really weird. I I didn't quite understand the uh, why it didn't come with these roof racks because if you buy directly from uh, Free Spirit Recreation, the basic trailer comes with the roof racks. And you know what good is the basic trailer if you don't at least have roof racks to do something with? Um, so Capit told me that they they don't order them with the roof racks so that they can pass on that savings to the to the consumer um, you know I, I don't have access to the numbers I don't know what's going on there but cap it just get the darn roof racks because uh, free spirit recreation says that they ship them with the roof racks so it's a weird thing I, I don't understand why we're why they're not selling them with uh, roof racks when that's how free spirit sells them that's what you'll see in the photos as well when you go on the Capit website you'll see the roof rack but don't come with them okay so I like I, I cut down the length of the roof racks and I just got these stainless u-bolts uh, and bolted it down really well to the roof racks like that is not going anywhere and then the roof rack in turn provided me with some uh, mounting positions for my for my lighting uh, I got a I got a spare tire for the trailer that I purchased afterwards basically same wheel and tire um, it was about 500 bucks but kind of a must-have I didn't bring it up here because I'm so close to home but I would sit that up in the basket uh, as well as um, my little kitchen box here I'll show you so right now I just have this pelican case kind of strapped in here um, I throw that in my shed when I get home so it's not uh, stealable at home I do live in Chilliwack and I thought this would be a great place for just the uh, kitchen type stuff uh, such as cookware. 
I've got this with the partner stove. I got the grill. Um, I just got some dishes in there. Uh, another pan. My uh, coffee maker. Percolator. And uh, just a few utensils. Some knives and whatnot. Um, and uh, Pelican makes a I believe it's a, a BX line of, of cases that are made to hook on to uh, roof racks and whatnot. And they're really nice. And the one that I want, the one that I would like to have would fit in here perfectly. Uh, but it's 500 bucks. So I'm, I'm kind of holding off on that. But I'd, I'd like to get it eventually hard mounted so that I always got my kitchen stuff here. And my reasoning behind having the kitchen stuff up in here rather than inside is because I use that tote for everything. And if I'm, if I'm on a trip in the future and I want to just pull over and quickly cook something, I don't have to dig inside the trailer. I just have to pull out my slide out, get my stove going, open this, and boom, I'm cooking. Got these little bungee things up here to hold it up out of the way while I'm camping. Yeah, I'm gonna be leaving today. Close that up. We got the uh, the bucket toilet there. Uh, Lagaloo. Those are pretty handy. I like them. Um, let's move on to the, the hooker upper part of the awning. So the, the one kind of downfall and ongoing issue with using an awning next to a rooftop tent is uh, making so that it doesn't leak through here and uh i didn't work all that out i do have leakage but i have camped in the rain with this and what i've got a nice big tarp and i'll just throw it over the whole thing uh right over the tent rooftop tent and then down at least past yeah uh, the structure here so that it drains out onto the um, awning and doesn't come through there which is undesirable for obvious reasons I'd like to see someone come up with a good method uh, to beat that I I thought about some kind of tin across here um, just to seal it from here into here so that if it did leak it would maybe leak back that way i don't know you could maybe have a build a kind of a fancy gutter thing um still might do something but need to think about it more so when it's time to go tote does tend to get heavy nice nicer with two people but i can get it in my Just look at that fit. Just fit the fit. Shove her in. And we get her off to the side. And that's uh that's how much room I got. here and just throw it here it's in there nice like that and then anything else I can kind of throw in nice tight fit doesn't tend to rattle around in there but uh, when you're doing these designs you you want to maximize your space best you can. So, you know, we 
use a lot of different methods, but choose the one that you that you like and go for it.